Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson eight of my 6809 assembly programming tutorials. Today we're going to be learning how to make a sound on the Dragon Tandy Coco. Those two systems are basically the same machine from the point of view of this lesson. So we're going to make sounds on these systems. Now, the system itself has a six bit digital to analog converter, which is how we can send sound data. Unfortunately, though, we actually have to basically crank it out ourselves. Whereas some systems have like things like an AY sound chip that will do work for us, or things like the Amiga will automatically stream bytes of data to the sound chip, the Dragon will not. We're basically having to send the volume levels straight to the hardware and that will basically build the sound one frequency at a time. So we need to have a basic understanding of what kind of data we send will make what kind of sound. And so to hopefully help with this, what I've done here, if I just zoom in a little bit, is I've made a sequence of examples here, little screenshots, and these will show what different sound waves will sound like and then explain how we have to generate them from single byte values. Now, with regards to the DAC on the Dragon, the bottom two bits are unused. The sound sample, the six bits, are the top six bits of the byte that we send. And these bytes are sent as unsigned values. So a value of zero will be a very quiet sound and a value of FC will be a very loud sound. Now, depending on the time we change the sound, if we change between zero and 80, for example, very quickly, that will create a very high pitched sound and that would then make a wave that would look like this. If we change it more slowly, sending 80 twice, for example, and then sending zero twice, that would send a, make a very slow changing sound and that would sound lower pitch. Now, 80 is only the middle range of the volumes. If we sent FC and then zero and then FC and then zero, that would create a very loud sound. And it were, if, if we changed it very quickly, it'd be very high pitch. Now, those are, would be what's known as a square wave um, because as you can see, it makes a kind of square shape. But if we send a lot of very random numbers, then we would effectively make a very distorted, noisy tone. So you can see here, this is changing very chaotically and the values we're sending are pretty random. Now that would create a distorted tone. So we're gonna have to do this by ourselves. So we're gonna to have to send different values to the DAC. The size of the number we send will define the volume and the frequency of the changes will define the pitch. And also if we go between zero and our volume, that will be loud. And if we go between zero and random numbers with a maximum of our volume, that will be a distorted tone. It's a bit of a pain, but that's what we have to do. Now, unfortunately, the, this, there's another problem. Um, basically, we could, in theory, just have a loop that was doing this and it would use up all our CPU power and we'd be able to do nothing else while making a tone. Common problem with the ZX Spectrum. However, on the Dragon, we do have the option of using an interrupt. We can define an interrupt handler and the interrupt handler will fire automatically at timed frequencies. And then we can de decide when we want to change that tone during those interrupts. And that will allow us to play a sound while the actual code is running relatively normally. And that's what we're going to do today. So it's a complex example, unfortunately, that we're going to be looking at today, but that's what it's going to take. So. How do we actually use the hardware? Well, the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need to take that DAC for sound. What we need to do is we need to set the bits of the PIA to select the hardware and to select it for sound. Now, port FF23 bit three will define the sound source. We need to turn the sound on, otherwise it would be used by the joystick. And then we need to use FF03 and FF01 and select the source of the sound as well. And if we write a zero to bit three of both of those, we will select the DAC as the source of the sound and that will allow us to make the sounds by writing to the port. We're going to be sending the sounds to port FF20. The top six bits are the one that define the volume. And as I say, the volumes we send will define the actual kind of sound, what it sounds like. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's how we're going to actually set the sound up, but we also need to use the interrupts. Now we're going to use HSync. This is a fast interrupt. We're going to turn that on and that is going to fire and then we will be able to trap that and we will be able to decide when to change our sounds to make the pictures we want. When the interrupt fires, this will end up calling the address 010C. It actually calls FFF8 first, but we can't change that address. 010C is the address that we can write to. So we write to that address with the address of our interrupt handler. And then our interrupt handler will have to deal with changing the sound as required by the pitch we want to make. 
Now once the interrupt fires, we'll need to clear it, otherwise it will just fire again. So we need to read from port FF00 and that will clear the interrupt. Okay, I know that's all a little bit complicated, I apologize, but unfortunately that is the name of the game for this system. Let's go over to the source code, let's actually hear some action, let's hear some sound. So Chibi Sound takes a single byte. The way it works is we pass a single byte in the accumulator, the bottom six bits of this define a pitch, the sixth bit defines the volume, zero is low and one is high, and the top bit defines whether the noise is on or off, so we can make simple beeps and bloops for our game. And this is all being done with the interrupt handler in the case of this system. So let's fire it up and let's hear how things going. Okay, so you can hear a tone there. And it's kind of distorted now. And when we go over C, it will become louder. Yeah, that's loud. And then when we go back over zero, it will become a more pure tone again. Now, the tones do vary on the systems, just depending on the hardware, but the kind of tone, low, high, loud, quiet, etc., is the same on every system, and that's why I use this in my games, because I can make simple little sounds for my games without rewriting huge amounts of code each time. So that's what Chibi Sound is, and that's what we're going to be writing today. Okay, so Chibi Sound will run this routine on the Dragon, and this is going to do all of the work of setting things up for us. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to turn off something known as 1-bit sound. Now, 1-bit sound is a bit like the spectrum emulation where rather than sending a 6-bit DAC value, we could just send a 1-bit volume, but we need to turn that off because we've got something a bit better this time. We don't need to use that silly thing. So we we're turning it off here, and we do that by setting the bit that handles 1-bit sound to input rather than output, and that will disable it here. It's a bit complicated, but these are basically doing that for us. Now what we need to do is we need to turn on the DAC and the H-Sync interrupt and we're doing that just here. Now bit zero here is turning on the H-Sync. That is the fast interrupt that we're using to change our sound quickly enough to give the correct pitches. We're turning on three sync that's done by this bit zero here. Now bit three is the one that is actually defining the sound source here. We're setting the sound source as the DAC. Um, you can see that just here by these two here. That is selecting the sound source as, as being the DAC. And then we're selecting the DAC as handling the sound with this right here. And again, it's bit three, that's this one here, that defines the sound source as being the DAC. If that was a zero, we would be using the DAC for the joystick, which is not what we want to do. Okay, now we've shifted the accumulator into the X register here just as a backup so that we can use A for other things. Next, what we're doing here is we're getting A back and we're testing if A is zero. If A is zero, then we're gonna turn off all sound. So we jump down to here and we're loading an interrupt handler into X. Now we've actually got multiple interrupt handlers here. We've got three versions here, one for making a tone, one for making a noise, and one for making no sound at all. And in this case, we're selecting the no sound at all one and that will just clear the interrupt by reading from FF00 and then returning. Now, it's important to understand that this interrupt handler actually will back up all of the registers when it runs that's uh, built into the 6809 processor. So we don't have to worry about corrupting the registers and the flags and things, it, it'll be okay. So we can just load in the accumulator from that and then return from interrupt with RTI here. When we want to set the interrupt handler, first of all, we are turning the IRQ off here by setting this bit to one within the condition codes, that will disable the interrupt. And then we are setting the new interrupt handler. We're basically writing a set of commands to 010C, 010D and 010E. And we're writing a jump command, which is hexadecimal 7E, that's the hexadecimal bytecode for a jump command. And then we're writing the address in the X register to 010D, 010E. Now, it, I should point out that there's probably a jump command here anyway, but for safety, I wanted to write one in. Once we've done that, we're then turning the interrupt handler on by setting a zero bit just here on the IRQ bit, and that will re-enable the interrupt handler. Okay, so that's enabled our interrupt handler. In that case, we were looking at the silent one. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to set up the settings for if we're actually making some kind of sound, and we're going to need to pass some parameters to our interrupt handler, and we can't do them with the registers because we don't know when that interrupt handler is going to fire. So we're defining some bytes of RAM that we're going to use for various purposes. Now we're going to need to change the volume at certain times, and so to do this, we're going to use a total of four variables. Now one is the maximum volume, one is the frequency. Now this is the 
amount of time that we're going to want to pass before we change the tone. Remember, if we change the volume very quickly, then it will make a high pitch tone. If we change it very slowly, it will make a low pitch tone. So that is the time we want to change things. That's the current time that will just basically increment all of the time. And when it reaches frequency, we will change the volume that's being output to the DAC using this value here. Now, if we want to make a noise, we're going to need to have some random source of data. So we're going to actually use the source code of this program itself. We're going to use bytes of the source code as random data, random-ish, it'll do. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're doing next is we are going to actually use the bytes of our parameter and we're going to set them accordingly in those variables. So first of all here, we are going to get the volume. There's just one bit of volume in our param Chibi Sound parameter. That's this one here, just here. And so we're getting that, we're shifting it to the left, and we're ordering it into a parameter that uses the top six bits here. Remember, the DAC uses six bits, and it's the top bit six bits that it uses. So we're storing those in, and we're storing those into the volume there. And then we're zeroing the current sound just to silence what was previously going on. Next, what we're doing is we are defining the pitch. So what we're doing this time is we're getting these six bits here, and these become the timer for when we actually want to change the volume. So a low value will be a high pitch, and a high value will be a low pitch. So we're loading those in. We're incrementing it by one just because a value of zero would cause us trouble. And we're storing that in the frequency byte that we're going to use in our interrupt handler. Then what we're doing is we are checking the noise bit and we are branching depending on the noise bit being set or not. The reason for this is, is as I said, we're using two different kinds of interrupt handler. One for a plain tone, this one here, or one for a noise, this one here. And just depending which one we're using, we're ending up at the same point we use for the silent code, which is enabling that interrupt handler. Let's look at our tone interrupt handler first. Here it is. So what we're doing here is we are basically incrementing this S time value, and then we're just checking if it's equal to the frequency. If it's not equal to the frequency, then we don't want to change the volume yet that's being output to the DAC. So we're skipping over and updating the time. We're clearing the interrupt by reading from FF00 and returning. If the time to change the volume has occurred, then what we're doing here is we're loading the current volume that's being outputted. We're flipping the bits in it, and we're storing it back and that will effectively make a square wave that, that will alternate between the volumes and that will allow us to create the wave that will make the sound that we can hear. So we're flipping the bits there with the volume that will effectively switch between defined volume and zero. So if the defined volume was say hexadecimal 80, we would go 0, 80, 0, 80. And the amount of time it stayed at zero and the amount of time it stayed at 80 would be being defined by S frequency. So that's how we're making our tone here. So that's the straightforward one. And to be honest, the noise isn't much different. Again, we're waiting for S time to reach S frequency here. And once again, we're making our tone with hexadecimal FF20. But this time, rather than reading in the previous value and eoring it with the volume, what actually we're doing is we are reading in a byte from our program code offset by S noise. And then we are ending that with the volume, basically setting the maximum volume for the byte that was read in from the program code, and then we are using that as the output to hexadecimal FF20 here, and that will effectively give us some pseudo random noise there, and that's how we're creating those tones. It's, it's all a little bit tricky. As I say, if you needed something a little bit simpler, you could, um, you could just use this in a loop rather than the interrupt handler, but to be honest, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. Making sound on the Dragon is a little bit of a pain, but to be honest, having worked with things like the Spectrum before where we have very little control and we don't have the interrupt handler ability, it's actually a lot preferable. And I actually find it quite fun learning about how the, um, the data we actually output to a simple port like this creates a waveform and in the end we can actually hear it. And you can get programs that will make a fake oscilloscope that can do this kind of thing. I used a um, program to make these screenshots and as I say, it's a lot of fun to see actually the sound that you're hearing uh, being represented and when you've had the control of being able to create that sound as well by, as I say, writing bytes to a DAC in this case, that's a lot of fun too. So there we go. That's today's example. As always, uh, you can go to my website and you can download this. Um, the Chibi Sound Driver in its various forms has been used in all of my little games. So hopefully if you want to make a few simple sounds for your Pong game or your Space Invaders, it might be some use to you. But if you want something more advanced, of course, you can use it as a template and build something a lot better. Anyway, that's the end of today's lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
you have, please like and subscribe because I've got more um, Dragon Tandy Coco um, content planned. I'm going to be looking at the Coco 3 and it's a rather impressive graphics mode later on. So please stick around for that. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.